You are so far into your mural career. I'm just excited to get all the knowledge out of you. So we could just start by just introducing yourself a little bit to anybody who doesn't know who you are and just how you got into the arts. Well, um, <laughs> well, put it this way. I mean, when uh, I was younger, I was always wanting to be the best artist and I wanted to be get a name for myself. Today, I really don't care. My my uh, goal and mission is to bring up younger artists to take on the trade uh, and become fine artists and muralists. I mean, it's a dying art, but many, many artists want to do it, but they just don't know how. And so programs like yours are really going to be effective in inspiring others to do that. So anyway, I started my career uh, when I was four years old painting on walls in my mom's home. So, <laughs> so uh, she's, she's like begging me to come back now to do it. But uh, no, but you know, so all, all this long, all along, I've had a, a gifting that I kind of knew was different, but I, I, just didn't know how different. Um, artists are very different to begin with. And uh, it wasn't until probably when I was in, just graduated from high school that I realized, oh, what am I going to do with this, you know? And uh, so probably, I've been doing it 30 years now. So for me, it's just a, an amazing adventure that I've had working with some amazing companies like Disney and Universal, uh, SeaWorld, a lot of these different companies that I've been just absolutely enjoyed working with. But the most important ones I would love working with is just um, the artist. Um, you know, it's not so much the industry, industry it's, it's the artist um, it, that it just inspires me. So I think my next goal in my career here after 30 years is just to be uh, an inspiration to others um, that would want to learn. So, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know if I answered your question on that, but um. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Um, you, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Well, I love that you're wanting to give back too, because a lot of people. You're right. There are a lot of artists who just they want to do it, but they don't know how. And so that's where it comes with people like you that are giving all their stuff, all their information away. So how? How did you know that you were interested in the arts? Did you just graduate high school and then you just were super busy or how did that happen? Well, um, my mom wanted me after high school to go to an arts college and I thought it was a good idea, um, but I just did not want to do it. So everything I've done is self-taught. Um, but, you know, having just, you know, people in my life that were encouraging, that gave me uh, the you know my mom and dad getting finances for art to just do everything they can to push my my career never once did they say oh you need to be a doctor and not an artist or anything they always encouraged me to do what I wanted but um, I started my career um, working with a guy um, out of Hollywood um, I'm kind of old school so I I was you know, I'm 1971, born in 1971, so I seen the first Star Wars, I seen all this. So um, um, I live in Florida, so I live by Universal Studios in Orlando, about 20 minutes. So when I started, I started in high school to say, to say this, is that um, I worked on um, the revision of Snow White and the Seven Doors. Uh, down in this area, and it was all cells. So it wasn't computer; it was just all painting cells, hand by you know hand cells. So um, I I started doing that, but then it was it really wasn't interesting me um, in as far as the artistic side of it. So I got into doing sets and designs for a, a movie producer that was the um, he was the stunt coordinator for Darth Vader. Uh, with George Lucas. So he had come over to start his own production team down in this way. Um, and so I started working with him doing murals and um, sets. And man, I was rich. I was, I loved it. So, um, so I, I, I started it that way. And I uh, was invited to a small town to do murals. And little did I know that was where it started my career. And um, so ever since then, I've just been in love with um doing murals so yeah, yeah. your murals are so realistic oh, How, thanks. <laughs> yeah they just jump off the wall i found you from you you posted in the mural artist group uh, have you always been drawn to the, the the realism the wow factor um i think it's more the challenge of the whole thing um and you know i 
just the absolutely amazing beauty of the 15th century with all the murals. I think that just blew me away. I mean, I've been to probably, I've been to Rome like six times and I've just been in the, the halls of Raphael. I've been, you know, of course I've seen, you know, the, the all the murals of Michelangelo. I was just so inspired. I'd go back all the time. Still do. Um, but I think it, it was the majesty and the magical time of the 15th century that everybody was able to come and, and see these pieces of um, works that, you know, they didn't have movies. They didn't have any kind of outlet for art artistic, except for, you know, maybe the opera or whatnot. But um, so I think to me, having public art is not only important, but it's inspiring for others, young, young artists to come along and say, Hey, I could do that. You know, you know, so my, my biggest mural when I was 22 was 175 feet by 40 feet high. And uh, <laughs> so, well, and my wife, which she's my wife now, we drove up in a tiny Saturn to this big wall and she said, you're going to paint all that? And I said, well, yeah, of course, you know, being naive. And I said, um, she, she said, uh, she said, how? I said, I have no idea. I'm just going to get some scaffolding, some, you know, a paintbrush and some paint and see what happens. But it, it's the one on there on the mural site that's uh, the cattle wall, the big giant cow. Uh, you, and I just oh. recently posted that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's 27 years old, by the way. So. Wow. And you just, yeah, you just had to restore it a little bit or. Yeah, of course, along the way it gets sun, you know, damage of the sun, uh, the weather, um, you know, you have, you know, uh, blowing of the wind actually brings dirt, which is sandpaper to the wall. And so you have to kind of touch it up and reseal it. Um, probably every seven, seven to 10 years, maybe. So, but we use really amazing paints to there. I mean, we have some extraordinary paints with binders and sealers that um, can last a very long time. So. so what kind of paint do you use? What kind of supplies? Is there anything you don't like painting without? Like what, I'm trying to imagine what your setup looks like. Um, well, I mean, I, like I said, I'm old school, 30 years I've been doing it. And so we didn't really have kind of paints that, uh, I mean, I, I wasn't a Cro-Magnon going out and digging up, you know, dirt and turning it into paint. That's my, <laughs> I mean, <Eggs>. but we, <laughs> yeah, egg yeah, yolks, that kind of thing. But, um, but we definitely didn't have the kind of paint that was, had longevity to it. Um, and sealers were awful because sealers back then weren't really uh, water-based. They were sort of a oil base, which would crack and which would, um, you know, which would um, yellow and that kind of thing. And that's why you see some of the master paintings that were yellowing and cracking because they didn't have a sealer that was very good um, as far as elasticity, uh, long periods of time. So uh, back then I didn't even put a sealer on it. I mean, it was just like, uh, hey, if the, if the paint held up, then hey, it held up. But um, it, it, for, the, for the most part, it held up pretty good back then. But today, um, just a whole different, dynamic of paint i mean uh working at universal and sea world and we use some of the best paint on the on the market i mean i don't know if i can throw out brands there um are you interested in the yeah. brand <laughs> okay. oh yeah we're, i'm not we're interested in, in the, the the dollar I'm, figures the brands yeah. the everything well i'm not endorsed by these people but i would say that a, a lot of these uh brands like modern masters uh you've probably heard of those uh, there's a brand before that called uh man's brothers uh man's brothers was probably had the corner market uh when they started coming out with scenic paint um and uh let's see gosh uh golden had some new colors golden is mainly used for you know doing fine art pieces which is an extraordinary company as far as their 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 paints i mean you can't beat goldens i mean you walk into an art store and they're just all, all the way down you know the rows are, of all golden it's all the way down but um so as far as doing murals you really have to watch the type of you the type of brand you get i mean sherwin williams has some really good paints for exterior that will last for a long time. I mean, to get a pre-mixed color and just use that is kind of like sometimes what I do because I'm a lazy artist at times and I don't feel like mixing. Just mix it for me and I'll paint it up. And so, um, and I think the greatest thing you have to watch for is um, preparation of the wall, making sure that that wall is very cleaned, making sure that the da if there's any damage to the cement, uh, 
Um, uh, is there is, is there leaching? Um, is there stucco coming off? Uh, water damage behind? The, there's a, so many different factors that you have to take in consideration when you do a mural on the outside, especially on the inside. It's not so bad. But um, just tell me to slow down if I'm you know I'm trying to get all this information out for you. I love all of it. Keep going. <laughs> So you have to watch that prepping the wall is bar none the 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 biggest thing you have to to take in consideration. Uh, in between there, yeah, a good paint, making sure that you have UV inhibitors in there, mold aside, especially in places like Florida, whatnot, high humidities, um, and then uh, the sealer. The sealer is the I mean, that's the determining factor. That's like if you put lotion on your skin, you don't want to get burnt, you know. So that's the UV sealer. <laughs> you know, it depends on what you get, you know. So you don't want to use, you don't want to use a cheap sealer. Um, and, uh, you know, so you don't want to use a cheap paint or uh, primer either. So. I gotcha. I gotcha. How to so that giant mural that you did. And guys, you're going to have to, if anybody listening on the podcast later or anybody now, go check out his profile. And just so that you can see how big this thing is, it's the one with all the cows. How long did that take you? Uh, well, that was 175 feet by 40 feet high. Um, that was, it took me about five months. Um, we have a lot of rain, intermittent rain around here, storms, whatnot. I even got married during that time. So there was a lot that, you know, kind of went on at that time. But I had, I, I, real quick, I, I had no idea at 22 how naive I was about being able to tackle such a thing. I had never done before. So I was, I'm sitting here, in the, I was sitting in the studio going, how am I going to do this? You know, how am I going to paint such a huge thing? I mean, what do I use? You know, we didn't really have lifts to use um, that were really available. We had scaffolding. That's it. So I was sitting in my studio and I looked over and I saw the printer working because I just printed some and it prints like line by line by line, right? So um, I was sitting there going, you know what? If I put two scaffoldings together and up 40 feet high, I could probably start at the top, work myself over and work myself down just like a printer, up, down, 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 down. And I was like, wow, this works. So I kept the whole wall, I just went on down and hopefully by the end I had enough wall to finish off my painting. So that was sort of how I learned. Um, but today, like I said, I'm a lazy artist and I'll project it up there. I mean, I'm not trying to prove anything. I'm just trying to get it up there, you know, and paint it. So. Yeah, yeah exactly. it makes me feel so much better to say that you use a projector because mm -hmm. I think the same way. I'm like, yeah, I've already designed it on Procreate or on yeah. the iPad. I'm like, we've already done that. Let's just yeah. save time. Mm -hmm. How do you price? So back then, um, I wouldn't even guess how much you priced that giant thing that took you five months and then versus now. How have you priced in the beginning? Because a lot of people are still in the beginning stage who listen to this. Mm -hmm. How did you price then versus how do you price now? Well, you know, the, Andrew, there's so, like I said, I'm in a 30-year gap. So for me back then, people had no idea what a mural really was. So, I mean, they're like, well, how, I mean, I didn't even know. I mean, how do I price this? You know what? It's, it's kind of um, relative in some way to the whole dynamic of painting a wall for commercial one color and painting a wall for as an artist. So there really wasn't a differentiate from that. So I actually did talk to at, back then we had, billboard artist painters that painted billboards there wasn't any printing or anything like that so i was always amazed and fascinated by these scan guys standing on you know ladders way up in the sky trying to do lettering you know up close and so i just asked them i said you know how much are you getting for this stuff and you know it was a couple thousand dollars or maybe under that just to go out there and paint a billboard which back then it was pretty good so i just kind of you know, multiplied it a little bit and I end up, they end up raising like $10,000 for it, you know, and, and that 22, I was like, wow, man, I've already made it, you know, <laughs> so, but it, you know, little did I know it was like five months. So, you know, I was probably getting about $10 an hour <laughs> from what <laughs> I was doing and no, and no hazard pay on top of that 40 feet high, you know, working myself down off a of scaffolding. So, um, but to get back to you, what you were asking is, um, you know, and, and a lot of artists do have a hard time pricing the work. Um, one of the 
reasons why they do have a hard time is because they don't feel they're worth that much. You see what I mean? They, they, they're struggling as an artist. They go, well, they're not going to paint this. So they doubt themselves and they just do not end up pricing it enough to really get by to feed themselves. And that's why you have a lot of struggling artists, but it takes years and it takes confidence. So today I say I would rather do like two murals a year than like a hundred murals a year and get set paid the same price. So, I mean, it's just a matter of confidence and experience. Um, you have to work yourself up. You got to pay your dues, you know? So I'm actually got apprentices that actually pay me <laughs> to go work for me. But I mean, no, that's, I don't, I'm not free labor. I'm not, I'm not doing that, but they, you know, I, um, so today, I mean, okay. So if you go online and you go to Google and you say, and you could do this even now, it, uh, the artists can go there and see uh, what is the typical mural artist getting paid per square foot uh, nationally. So if you do that, you'll come up with a figure probably around $21 uh, a square foot to 22 average. If you're really good, it goes up to, the professionals usually go up to about uh, 28 to $40 a square foot, depending on how much you, you know, you're experienced at it uh, and how much the client wants to pay. I mean, sometimes they're, they're, the client says, you know, do whatever you want. I don't care how much it costs. You know, and those are really good clients, by the way. Um, but you have to be, you know, ethically ethical about it. I mean, you don't want to charge this guy that has a lot of money you know, twice as much as you would some, your, another regular customer. It just doesn't, you know, you can't sleep well at night with that. Yeah. So, you know, um, so yeah, on average, um, between eight to $18 a square foot is a good range. Uh, intermediate range is up to $18 to maybe 26. So if you can average that in, um, you do fairly well with that. Good to know. Okay. How do you find those customers that are just going to let you do whatever you want with an unlimited budget <laughs> or, or just customers in general? How are you finding your customers? Um, okay. So, uh, you know, it's all through, uh, my career has been all through word of mouth. Um, I don't think I have, I don't think I have spent one dime on advertising costs. Um, I believe if you do the job right, you're going to get customers. So if you have a thousand people that see a mural that you've done, um, you know, if you have 10% of those people, you know, or, or less than that, maybe 1%, you can, you can make a living off that. So every time somebody sees your mural, they're more apt to say, I got to have this guy, you know? So it's word of mouth um, and getting involved basically in your community, um, getting involved in other artists, um, uh, I worked for Universal, you know, and all those really helped me. Um, and, and a good thing is just to really, really push a good, solid uh, portfolio um, and do that. Now, with what we have today, uh, we have Instagram, we have Facebook, and you can buy promotions on face, uh, Facebook and Instagram, really push your work. Um, having a good website, too, is you know, really good um, to have um, just to be able to have your different variety of what you do. So I think word of mouth, but having um, having a really good understanding about being professional about it. If you say you're going to do something, do it. Don't, you know, if you're not inspired, too bad. Go, you know, drink a Red Bull or whatever and just get out there and finish it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, I love that you just said that first off the whole like show up show up on time like do do the basics but even if you're not inspired just do it you know like I think the hobby artists are ones that just paint whatever they want to and mm -hmm. professionals are more of like I mean I don't really want to paint rocks today but I'm gonna go do it with a smile yeah. on my face <laughs> yeah that's true yeah um do you have any bits of advice for artists that like, I, like basically questions that I wouldn't think to ask you? Cause a lot of the times, you know, a lot of us don't know what, what we don't know. And until someone just gives us those pieces of advice, do you have anything that is maybe you've encountered or advice you've get, been given along your career that you want to give to others? Um, I would say don't do like I did and bite off more than you can chew um, because it can really, backfire on you and um yeah i remember when i was in eighth grade um 
I told my mom, I really wanted to do oil painting. Um, and so we went to the store and mind you back then, oh gosh, I feel old. Mind you back then, we did not have Michael's. We didn't have any kind of art stores that were readily available to us in, in the rural areas that we were. Um, you know, it, it was just a challenge to have materials, um, to have to own a, a paintbrush that was decent was amazing. You know, it's like, wow, you know, you've got that. So nowadays it's like, oh, big deal. You know, I have hundreds. But um, so I would say um, get support from somebody that believes in you, your mom, your dad. Um, and don't scare them to death saying, I'm going to be an artist when I grow up. Just say, I'm going to take this easy as I go. If I have to go to school and just get training, that is the best thing to do. You know, there's some great art schools. Uh, Pratt Institute, others, uh, Ringling Art, uh, art um, School. But um, I would say just take your time and don't doubt yourself um, and just believe that what you're doing is something that somebody else is just going to be a love and to be inspired by. Um, some other things. I've got so, so many things. You just need to pull it out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, yeah. Does it, re that's great advice too. Like if, you know, you said you're self-taught, but if, if I actually just had a student um, apply for, for Ringling. So it's funny that you just said that he just got in. It's like that, that's his, that's his journey. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah. What other kind of bits of advice do you have? My cuckoo clock is going off. Can you oh, is that a, is that a German cuckoo clock? Cause yeah. it sounds like one. I don't know. We just got it. Yeah. I just, <laughs> yeah. If, if, if uh, by the way, if anybody wants to see all my work, it's in, uh, on keithgoodson.com. Uh, that's my website. K E I T H G O O D S O N like goodson.com. Um, in 1994, I start, I had an agent that was from New York and he, um, he, re he believed in me. And, um, so, I'm sorry. It was a 2004. Yes. And he believed in me and he came from New York and he was a major uh, artist out of New York and he was um, making 60,000 for a painting. 80, uh, so he came down, he saw my work and he really wanted to, me to be uh, to represent me in New York. So I was so t t timid because in the town I have, we have two stoplights and that it. I'm like, what? Well, I don't want to go to New York. But he said, no, trust me, you're going to have a great time. So I took one year and I did uh, one painting a, uh, a month. And those are the photorealist paintings that you see on my site. You'll go to photorealism and they're, and they're really um, painted uh, almost photorealistic in style. And I absolutely love painting that way. I, like I said, uh, I'm just real lazy today as an artist, so I don't really like to spend a lot of time. <laughs> it's like Picasso. He's, you know, he's like, man, just, you know, give me a coloring book. But um, so I went up there. I was showing with like at cash. I was showing with Jane Seymour, Peter Max, some of the amaz most amazing artists selling my work. I mean, I think we made like 200,000 that year, just in four days. So I really just I mean, it was a boost to my ego and my career and um and i just started just believing in myself and i just said you know i can do this even though there's been times that i sat there and we all do and sit there and go this is awful i can't paint you know I, this is crazy what am i doing you know but i mean i'm a man of faith you know i believe that we all have um our faith to rely on to because we have a journey and we need to be on that journey, whether we like it or not, uh, whether we have hardships or not. Um, it's good to have somebody, uh, my wife, that is, uh, we've been together 30 years, and um, she's a psychologist. So that's kind of a, a funny thing, an artist with a psychologist. I mean, hey, you know what? I have support for all my problems, you know. So, you know, I, a Van Gogh and all of them would have really appreciated having a psychologist for a wife. Um, but um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, if there's any questions that you have or anybody else, um, I would be willing to take those because, um, um, let's see here. Um, so as far as subject matter, um, you know, that is a huge issue with artists. Um, people see somebody, I mean, there is absolutely, 
some amazing artists on Instagram. I mean, just absolutely phenomenal. And you see those and you just want to just say, I'm just going to do something else. You know, I'm going to have another career. I'm just going to be a pilot or somebody. Because when you see these guys, you're just like, oh, my God, these guys are good, you know. So I've been struggling all these years. And this guy's, you know, 26 and he's doing fab fabulous things, you know, and making tons of money. Um, but you have to get over that and just realize if you're happy with what you're doing, who cares what other people think? Who cares what, um, you know, the gallery wants you to do? If you start doing something that you love to do, people are going to, people are going to absolutely fall over it because they believe in you and they believe you in you as the artist. And so uh, for me, it's just been like, I mean, I'm overwhelmed with work. I've got work till probably end of next year. I mean, this last year has, through all this crazy COVID stuff, has actually doubled for me. Uh, I have no idea why, um, but I, it's just been a, a great time. And now I get to really pick what I want, you know, to do. I get to pick the ones that I enjoy and not the ones that I, you know, don't enjoy because, <laughs> you know, that's hard as an artist. But I would say, um, you know, it's okay to go through instagram and and go to different art size and be inspired and look at these guys were amazing and but when it comes back to it what is the what is it really that you enjoy doing what is it that you do when you get you know into your studio what well, you know what makes you happy what what inspires you um i see a lot of young people that copy other work you know uh, i see a lot of people you know they like one instance, somebody was painting an eyeball and now you see hundreds of artists doing eyeballs, you know? So, you know, it's sort of repetitious. No, nobody really wants to buy an eyeball because everybody's painting an eyeball. So um, that's the key. And that's the struggle. You know, when, when I ask every, you know, any artist, basically I said, what's your purpose in life for being an artist? And they sit there with, you know, glazed eyes and say, well, I have, no idea <laughs> you know so i think that we you know you have to really dig deep into your soul and you have to figure out why am i here and what am i doing and who am i trying to inspire um and some of some of the artists are just going to say hey this is just a, a, a hobby you know um and that's it you know on my instagram it's it's funny because i say um uh, uh, this is just a hobby, you know, on my Instagram, <laughs> you know, so for me, but it is, it's actually something I really enjoy and I love doing in my studio. And I don't even, I wouldn't even care if I got, you know, paid or not. I just love what I do. And it's not, it's not like a career. And so at this time in my life, um, I don't know why, but I just don't care to be the next greatest artist. I just want to enjoy what I do. Yeah, I, I love that. And I you think you've reached a level that a lot of people listening especially want to achieve. And you're, you're totally right. I think when you love what you do, it's not just painting. What subject matter do you love? What did you like as a kid? Like what, what style and all that? I think if we, if we ask ourselves those questions, it makes it even less like a job awesome. and just more following your passion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, as an artist, you, you know, th there's a lot of um, prosperity teachers that will say that you really have to have five uh, rivers of avenues in your career to really make the money you need. And, and absolutely true. Uh, as an artist, you got to be able to be versatile. Um, I worked for the movie, movie industry. I worked as a fine artist. I worked as a, uh, a layout artist, a digital artist. Um, I've got all the digital equipment I need. I never thought I would ever do that, but I feel like I'm cheating sometimes. But uh, there's all these different elements of being an artist that you need to consider. Uh, does somebody want a website design? Learn a little bit about website design. Take a little bit of your artistic knowledge and apply that to it. Um, uh, learn every avenue that you can to make money. If you go to my website, you'll see that I'm a uh, a graphic artist, I'm a muralist, I'm a fine artist, um, I do illustrations for books, um, you know, I pretty much broaden my horizons to make money. And I have done this 30 years um, as a self-employed artist. And raised, awesome. three, and raised three kids and a wife. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> really, I, I have questions about that then. How did you, so I don't have kids yet, 
but there's talk of and yeah. I paint all the time. And so I'm like, I just say paint all the time. How do you juggle both? How do you do both? Well, of course, I'm not a mother. So, you know, mothers have a lot of priorities per se. I mean, uh, we live in a different culture today, obviously, uh, uh, as far as, you know, moms and wives and, and this kind of thing. And um, so for me, I was gone a lot. I mean, I was away from my family a lot. I did a stuff at the movie studios. I would uh, travel a lot doing murals. I've been overseas to Russia, Poland, uh, Germany, Italy. I've done, you know, I've been, been there. I mean, I mean, I've done some amazing things and I really enjoy it. Um, so to say, to raise a family, um, um, is extremely difficult. <laughs> I mean, um, like five years of my kid's life, they didn't really see me much. Um, uh, it's a sad deal, but, um, you know, um, but, you know, uh, I'm, I'm enjoying them now. I mean, I'm, they're 21, 23, and 14, my beautiful 14-year-old. She's amazing. I, I am pushing her. Please be an artist. Please, because I'm, try, I'm trying to carry on the tradition in our family and she's just not interested so <laughs> not, not not yet anyway and but oh, I, I love how you're honest with that because it is it i mean i'm sure it is hard i just don't know at all and um but i, I love your, your honesty with that and yeah you can be with them now and you never know because i've heard a lot of people a lot of people are like yeah art whatever and then they get into the real world and have a real job and they're like okay maybe art sounds pretty good <laughs> mm -hmm. well you're right let me go back and say um I, I would I would advise the young artist twenties to 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 go to college, okay, um, and to get their degree, but maybe double major um, in something. Uh, graphic graphic oh, design. Sorry, sorry. Hold on, Ryan. Ryan, no, <laughs> no. Hold on. Hey, go, go. Okay. Anyway, sorry. so. I, I would suggest the young artist to really uh, look at the options of going to a good school, uh, but double majoring and minoring in something that would be something that they would enjoy. Uh, like, let's say, for instance, um, um, you know, coding or IT tech or something that they can kind of fall back on um, or maybe marry somebody who's rich. Uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but... Uh, but um, I just encourage them to get as much education as they can because for me it was super hard. I mean, you know, a month or so without food. I mean, that's literally what would happen sometimes. Um, so um, just get as much education as you can for what your field you're going in. Do you want to be a better painter? Find some people that are good painters and let them teach you. Um, college is super expensive and by the, I've had many artists that come to me and say I wish I wouldn't have waited, wasted four years and eighty thousand dollars of my life to do something I know I'm loving to do and I'm not even using what they taught me to do you know so with you know a gifted artist has it in them I mean it's going to come out and uh, so you know so that's that's a good thing I would say is don't just jump right in and think you're going to make it, you know? Yeah. Maybe wait in, maybe, maybe go from full time to part time mm -hmm. and then get a job. As your mom would say, get a job, <laughs> get a real job. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. Get a real job and then quit that real job. Once the art starts to take yeah. off. <laughs> because it can, I mean, you can go on like um, Etsy and there's so many different um, stores that you can make your art, as a part-time hobby and make a, make some money. Uh, I had several artists that would paint paintings and they would sell them on the side and man, they started making a good living and now they're full-time, you know, artists. Um, we're, we're in, we're in a different society as far as art is concerned because back when I was, um, growing up, we had what they call galleries and you had to go into the gallery and you have to look at the paintings and then you had to negotiate deals. But artists would go to the galleries, get accepted and be put on the walls. Nowadays, it's really not like that. It's just basically online galleries. And if you like the painting, buy it. So there's no really appreciation in the actual, uh, the, the look of the work. I mean, the really looking at the paint and coming up on it, it's just nothing 
it's just it's kind of like this wall and veil from the artist to the media that we look at through our our screens does that make sense yeah yeah it does yeah because they're even when i follow people online and i see their stuff when you see it in person it's just a completely different thing it's a new appreciation for it but you're right there a lot of the times we see video or time lapses and stuff through our phone so it's just a different promotion but seeing it in person is just mm -hmm. better absolutely um yeah and i encourage the uh, the young artists coming up is just do not give up on yourself don't listen to what anybody has to say and that's a good thing but, uh, you know, and a lot of people have a hard time, a lot of artists have a hard time accepting uh, critique, um, uh, constructive criticism, should I say, and they just absolutely flounder around without knowing really what to do or how, how to get it better. And they have, they have really a rejection mentality. And so, you know, that's a huge thing with artists and, um, and you just got to get over that because, you know, at this point in my life, I really don't care if you like my work or not. You know, if you like it, fine. That's nice. Um, but, you know, it's just getting past that place in your life, you know. So. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I think this is, this is just yeah. a whole lot of information, and, but bottled into one. And I think it's probably something that someone's going to need to hear and yeah um, absolutely and if anybody does have questions for me they can go onto my instagram send me messages ask questions also on facebook and then also on my website keithgoodson.com and then you can do a contact and i'll i will um message you back on that awesome great thank you so much for coming on it's so great to connect with you such a an artist who you i just love your style it's just so wowed and just from where you are in your career i think it's it's just it's something to achieve too and i think you're just a perfect example of what a muralist can be to all these artists who are maybe doubting right now or not sure and or in the hard spots in the mm -hmm. in the beginning and just so it's just nice to look at someone and be like it, it can get easier and it can get fun and you won't even care what people think about you after a while yeah. so just, you, you really don't honestly you don't and and i would say also try to get get underneath somebody that is experienced uh in the art you will probably cut seven years of your you know hard time of your life off out if you just get under somebody that's been in it for a while you, you will learn so much you get it be a, an apprentice pay that person to for them to you to be there uh do whatever it takes to just learn 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 um and and to not make the you know uh hard knocks you know school uh mentality and uh yeah and be inspired enjoy what you do that's the biggest thing with this, all this art is just enjoy what you do and keep going keep pushing forward so true yes yeah, so true and i just want to echo that too you know, follow somebody that has already done what you want to do and go do that just go do it yeah, um do it. But yeah the, the, that's pro partly what the the mural master program and then the artist academy is about just showing people how to paint murals because i've been through it and we, you can just shortcut it and use rollers and do all the fun absolutely. shortcuts. absolutely do whatever it takes and don't worry about the critics that would say oh you're cheating okay so you're so you're cheating so what i enjoyed what i did cheating <laughs> <laughs> yeah <You know? laughs> yeah a, a projector is not cheating and people say that to me all the time and i'm like okay so you 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 finish it like and they're like no no i, mean, I can't the, finish <laughs> the, the 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 work if you project it, that work has already been done, like you said, sitting down, doing the rendering. What do I need to do? What colors I need to do? That's already been done. You've you've been inspired to do that. Um, so then it's just, hey, let's uh, get it up there and let's start doing the finished project. Yeah, so. exactly. Awesome. Well, I will let you get back to your very busy day. And I appreciate you coming on. It's been great to connect. Thank you again. Yeah, thank you, Andrea. Um, and look forward to getting any questions that would they, they, anybody would need so yeah sounds good keithgoodson.com guys keith goodson go follow him on all the things and just really go follow him to see exactly what we're talking about because his art is pretty your art is pretty great well <laughs> thank you and i really don't care but <laughs> anyway i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> you're like thanks for the compliment but yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you and have a good night you too bye-bye <laughs>